eight weekers. Welcome to week two. Congratulations for making it this far. I just closed my screen. You guys are going to get used to me doing weird things on video. Um, so today I wanted to talk to you uh, about, of course, what's coming up next, what the next week challenge is and the prize and how everyone's doing and all that. But like I mentioned in the very first video, we're actually going to have a topic each week where we do a little bit of education. And I will disclaimer one more time that I'm not a nutritionist. I have no certifications of any kind. And anything that I'm teaching you is just based off of either uh, Beachbody nutrition guides, Beachbody meal planner information, and like research that I've done, and then any of the NASM or ACE personal training books. Uh, nutrition sections. So that's pretty much where my information comes from. You can Google all of it and have it, you'll figure out that I'm you know, not making stuff up. The biggest one that I wanted to talk to you about today was under eating because it seems to be a really large problem in women. And I don't know if you guys have put it together, but our group is all women. Um, and it is running prevalent in our group already that people are under eating. Your guys, my fitness pals are so, so under said, so many of you. And so we really need to talk about why this matters and how it's going to stop you from reaching your goals. So under eating is a cause of weight gain. It actually, for a long time in our country, obesity was considered a malnourishment disease and not an overeating disease because of the way that your body processes the different food and where it gets put in your body. There are three energy systems in your body, and they all function at different times. Some function while you're sleeping, some function higher while you're working out really hard, some function while you're working out at a moderate level, um, and things like that. And they combine together to give your body energy in the different areas that it needs it throughout the day to make sure that you can accomplish everything you need to accomplish. And when you have just like your basic person standing there, most people at a resting rate, will burn about their body weight times 10. Another way that that's been put is you can take your body fat percentage, if you guys have body fat percentage calculators, and find out how many pounds of fat are in your body, and you can burn 31.4 um, calories per pound of fat on your body. So it kind of works out either way, but body weight times 10 is actually a little easier to work with, in my opinion. So that's the one that I usually go to. So that's your like resting calorie rate, which means if you got up in the morning and just walked to your couch and then laid on it for the whole day, resting, that's how many calories you would burn. So for someone like me, who's usually between 160 and 170 pounds, I usually burn, I can burn 1600 to 1700 calories in a day without any additional activity whatsoever. So on common days where I actually spend the majority of my time sitting in this chair, um, I won't burn, you know, really more than 21, 2200 because I don't do much else on those days if I'm not working out, right? So I'll, you know, go to the restroom, go downstairs to get lunch, go get water, whatever I'm doing, and it won't be much because my bed is, there, I can touch it, right there. So I don't go very far from my bed to my chair. So when I don't work out, I burn around... 2100-ish calories. That's if I don't leave the house, I don't do anything else in a day. So it's really important that I give myself enough nutrition to where I never have more than a 1000 calorie deficit from my average calorie burn. And that's because the over 1000 calorie deficit, your body actually can shut off one of your energy systems because it thinks that you're going to need that energy. And I like to equate it to a bear when they're about to hibernate. Body knows not to use the energy system because the bear is sleeping, but we still need to nourish it, right? So up until hibernation, it's storing and storing and storing and storing and storing. And the bears get really fat for the winter, and then they are they come out from the winter and their hibernation, they're all skinny, right? Because they use it all, but they didn't get to take anything in. So your body basically thinks that you're not going to feed it, so it needs to store on to the um, fat because it thinks, okay, well, she's not going to feed us, but she's going to ask us to do things, you know, get up and go brush her teeth and go to work and things like that. So let's make sure we have some reserves for her to get through her day. 
So as you're eating the food, it starts to store it. Now that happens after a thousand calorie deficit. And what can happen is if you do that for a really long time, it can get sort of stuck that way and take a really long time to reverse. Not a really long time, right? Months or so, not like a decade or anything. Um, and it can be sort of a difficult process. So what I would, I have a lot more information to give you on this, but I just want to make a point here that what I would recommend that you do is quickly just do some math and figure out the minimum that you need to be eating. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to read you the um, form of calculations from the TurboFire book. And they're the same as the Insanity book and the P90X book. And they're also the same um, in the NSAM personal training certificate book. So I should have had this open if I did. Um, so I'm going to read it to you. And I recommend that you actually follow along with me. Um, Exactly what I'm doing and some things are not really gonna be applicable to everyone but I'll give you some exceptions okay so this is actually this is on my blog it's called how many calories should I eat I just copied it right out of there it says how many calories should I eat to lose weight that's the name of it so what you're gonna first do is figure out how much you weigh okay so figure out how much you weigh um which you guys in theory weighed in before this challenge so that's the first one. So then you times that by 10. And remember, I told you that's the resting metabolic rate. So that's where we're starting. And then step two is to figure out how much, how many calories you burn on a regular basis. So they have three options. You have taking that number that you just got, that current body weight times 10. So for me, we'll just go with 1,600 for 160 pounds. And timesing it by either 10% if you're sedentary which would be most likely my lifestyle because I don't need to have much. I'm either out traveling or I'm very much here. Um, so when I'm out traveling, it can be a bit different, but for the most part, I'm here in the house. Um, and then 20% would be moderate. So, you know, you work outside the home and maybe you don't sit at a desk all day, but you, um, you're up and down, maybe like your teacher for kids, like, you have a desk, you would sit at a desk, but chances are you'd be walking in front of the room, talking to them, things like that. You're not, you know, building construction or anything, but you're moving your body during the day. 30 is active. So that would be like, um, I know uh, one of the girls in my last group was a park ranger. So literally just walked around all day long and then came home and worked out. And then went to sleep and did it all over again. Just all the time. Never, ever, ever got to sit still. So it's very active. Or maybe you are a stay-at-home mom but your kids have four sports and you take them on play dates and you go to stroller strides and you're, you know, shopping over there and doing this over there. And it's just, you're a very active person. So that would be 30%. So I will do the math with you. So if I weigh 160 pounds, which hopefully is accurate, probably a little higher since I've been traveling. Um, that is 1600 calories, right? So I'm going to times that by 10% for myself since I do, I don't do much. And so timesing that by 10% is actually going to be 160 calories, I think. Let's do it real quick. 0.1. Yeah, 160 calories. So I'm actually going to add that to my 1600. So when I get that number, that's 1760 calories. So that's what I am going to burn if I just sort of do my thing. Just do my thing around here. Don't do much. Now, I know personally that it is a little higher because I wear my body book. Um, and so I do know that it's closer to 19, but so I'm, I'm probably more of a point two and I'm probably underestimating my movement um, a little bit. So I will go ahead and change that because I do know that that's inaccurate. So maybe I'm getting a little more exercise than I thought I was. That's awesome. So I'm going to do 1600 times 20%. That actually makes a lot. That's perfect. Actually. 1920. Okay. So I am moderate. Cool. Good for me. Okay. So now I have 1920 calories. So that's how, that's what's going to happen here if I don't do anything else. So I know at this moment that if I added no additional activity, I need to eat 920 calories per day before my body literally starts storing extra fat and I start gaining weight. Now it makes more sense. The recommended amount is to have a 500 calorie deficit. And that's just a safer arena, especially because calories can be inaccurate and we sometimes overestimate, underestimate, etc. So that's a 500 to a thousand somewhere in the middle, right in there would be your goal. Uh, but we'll just go with a thousand because I know many of you are on a kick to lose a lot of weight. So we'll just go with that. 
So that's if I didn't do anything but my regular day. I didn't go outside the house. I didn't do anything else. Just here, I would need to eat 920 calories just so I didn't gain any weight. Just so I didn't gain any weight. So are you hearing me? Just so I don't gain weight, I have to eat 920 calories. Okay. Now, what's the next step in the formula? What if you do work out? Well, then you need to go ahead and add the amount that you burn. So if you do have um, a body bug or a Fitbit or a Nike fuel band or, God, there's so many of these tracking things out in the world. I don't even know all of them. And you have actual calories or like a heart rate monitor too. Um, I think the Polar heart rate monitors. If you, if you know how much you actually burn during your workout, bonus, good for you, then you have exact numbers. Um, if you don't, then you can actually go on to either my fitness pal or lose it or spark people, or even just, um, I think calorie is one of the many websites that actually put in the activity that you, you did. So you can say I was walking, I was running, I was cardio kickboxing, whatever it was, and it will tell you. And one of the cool things about the beach body programs is they have done a lot of research on averages. So it actually says in the book what the average calorie burn is per workout in the book, like for each program. So Turbo Fire is 650. And Insanity, I think, is 850 to 1,000. So there's different amounts of calories that you can burn. So I'm just going to use a Turbo Fire example because it just makes the most sense to me. And it's a Turbo Fire book that I'm using right now. So I'm going to say, okay, 1,920 calories plus I do Turbo Fire most days. So that's 650 additional calories. So 1950 plus 650 is 2570. That's how many calories I'm going to burn in a day that I do a turbo fire workout and have my regular day, go to work, do my thing. That's my burn. So I have to eat at least 1,570 calories before I start to gain any weight. Now, probably it makes more sense to eat around 1,800, 1,900 in this case to give myself a little wiggle room because I never want to be gaining weight from under eating. And, and why? That sucks. Like you're hungry, just eat. Like <laughs> no point, right? Starve. So that's where I would be at because I would, and so I would simply either minus 500 or minus a thousand or whatever the deficit I'm looking for is. So for me, I'm going to do 500 because I like to eat food. And that leaves us with 2,070 calories. And this will allow me to continue to lose weight throughout the week. And here's why. There are about 3,500 calories in a pound of fat. So that means that in a week, if I have 500 calories a day times five or seven days, I don't know how many days a week there, it's 3,500 calories. It's one pound. So for me, if I was going to continue on that route, I would lose one pound a week, which is fine with me. Like that would be sufficient because um, I'm more focused on, you know, shaping and toning anyway. So if you want to lose two pounds a week, obviously it'd be a thousand. Now, of course, your immediate thought is, okay, well, cool. There's 3,500 calories in a pound. We're good, right? Like I'll just eat nothing and then I'll be getting super fast. And here's the thing. You can, for about 14-ish days, you can do that. You can like go nuts and eat really little and you will lose a lot of pounds on the scale. Here's the thing, you're not losing fat. And it's because of the way that your body distributes nutrients. You're losing muscle and a little bit of water and some bone. And there's actually some cool studies out there um, that they did, that they've done with like mice and other things like that, where they gave them different amounts of food and then just did their body composition, composition, not like they weighed them. Yeah, but they took the mice that had the lowest calorie diets, super, super, super restricted. And they had a medium amount between the three groups, a medium amount of weight loss as far as pounds. Or, you know, I'm sure they were like ounces or whatever because they're mice. Um, but their body fat composition went through the roof. Their body fat percentage went up. Their muscle went down. Their bone density went down. And it's because that's not you're not getting rid of what you need to. So then it messes with their metabolism. So let's talk about what you may have been doing to your metabolism all this time. 
So now that your body's really used to not using all the energy systems that it needs and running off of reserves that really don't even belong there, um, it can get sort of stuck. And what can happen is when you start eating the right amount of calories, your metabolism doesn't always catch up right away. For most of you, it will go into like hyper metabolism and it'll be great after like two weeks. You'll be feeling fantastic. You're all of a sudden have a lot of energy too because you've been depriving your body all that time and the pounds gone, just dropping off. But for many people who've been under eating for decades, it can take three, four weeks of actual weight gain before you will fix your metabolism. So this is one of those things that scares people a lot because they try it for a few days and they feel a little big or they feel like, oh, I'm eating all the time and this sucks. And then they give up and they go back to what they were doing. And it's this cycle and they never make any progress and they continue to feed their body with their own muscle tissue instead of the food that they're putting in their body. And then they get stuck and they can't figure out why they can't get to the weight that they want. So I'm going to tell you now that depending on how it goes for you, it doesn't matter what the results that you are having are. It's science. It's how it works. So you can think that I'm crazy or you can think that it's not going to work or, you know, you, you must have it, have it figured it out. But of course, I mean, obviously that's why you're in the group, right? Because you've got it all figured out. <laughs> Probably not. You can think whatever you want. But regardless, you do need to do this and you need to stick through it for the entire eight weeks because you need, we have some repairing to do for a lot of you, like some serious repairing to do on your body. Um, so it's really important that everyone calculate their calories and adjust them manually in my fitness pal. Now, my, my personal recommendation, and this is totally up to you, is that you put in your calories without a workout. And then if you do work out, add it, those calories, because you'll know. So where was, I don't remember what we were at. I was at like 1900 or something, 1960. We'll go with that. 1960 was my resting. So if I wanted to lose weight and not work out, I would just minus 500 for that. I would set my fitness pal at 1460 because 1960 minus the 500. I think that's where we were at. If I remember correctly. Might've been higher. Um, at least be 1460. So then if I do work out and I log that in my fitness pal and it adds those 650 calories we were talking about, I know that I need to eat all of them because my deficit's already worked in. It's already there. So I need to eat enough calories. So my number of calories should never be under. It should always be equal or just a little bit over. We never want to be under because what happens, remember, if we're under eating, we gain weight, right? So we need to eat our food. Now, I can tell you that in my experience, because of body fat percentage, this formula starts to skew after about 250 pounds. Because remember I said it's resting metabolic rate is your weight times 10, but it also is 31.4 pound, 31.4 calories a day per pound of fat. Well, the body fat percentage after 250 pounds skewed quite a bit. So this formula doesn't necessarily work perfectly. What you will find is that companies, big companies like Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers and Nutrisystem and the people who are doing your calorie count for you, what they do at that point is they put everyone at 250 plus at a 220 or 2,200 2, calorie diet, 2,200 calorie a diet per day. And that's a big enough deficit for most people at that point. So if you are above that and you get some crazy number like 4,000 calories, which that will happen, um, your, your actual goal, with, including deficit, is 2,200. So your, your non-deficit would be, you know, 2,700 or something like that. So um, just be aware that there is a bit of a cap because of the different ways that your body can be made up um, of, you know, fat, bone, muscle, tissue, etc. So just understand that. So change it in your MyFitnessPal and set this up as soon as possible. Obviously, we didn't cover this in the first week because you guys are getting to know everything and figure everything out. And it is necessary that you focus on just learning, doing the basics at the beginning. But now we're going to get a little more serious. And I sort of like to explain this in a, a more visual manner because sometimes I think people don't get it. Um, so I'm going to do that. I want you to just think about 
the individual cells in your body, like they're little, little cells and they're like little happy cells or maybe they're sad. I don't know how your cells are. Um, and they wake up and they've got work to do. And they're like very excited. Like, it's morning. I do some stuff. Oh, she needs to walk. We need to do things, right? So you wake up and you're like, cool, got to shower and brush the teeth, got to feed the kids, got to take them to school, I got to get ready for work, pack my lunch, check it on Facebook, don't want to miss the roll call, right? So you have all these things to do. So you're moving your body and the cells are like, okay, cool, toothbrushing, or teeth brushing, got, got this. So they're all, they're all in here, right? And they're, they're moving your arm for you. They're like, okay, cool, circles, we're doing good, two minutes, each time, we got this, right? Okay. And then you go, okay, I'm going to run down the stairs. And they're like, okay, everybody, run to the legs. we got to run down the stairs. The little cells are running around your body. They're doing stuff. And they're like, when is breakfast? We're so hungry. What's going on? Okay. Well, all right. Well, okay, so we don't have any breakfast, but that's okay. Well, we'll keep trying. We'll keep trying. It's okay. We can do this. We can do this. And they're chuffing along. And now, now you're feeding the kids. They're getting ready for school. And the kids are, like, throwing fit. And... They're like being noodles when you're trying to pick them up and it's a huge thing and you're being, you're doing all this, right? And so then the cells are like, oh, oh we're so hungry. We're so hungry. And they go, well, let's get some of the fat. And the cells are, and the fat cells are like, no, you cannot take the fat. She never feeds us. She does all this stuff all day long. You can't take, take us, take us. We're going to need this fat. Go get some muscle. Go, go, go ask the muscle for some food because we're not giving you any. So they go to the muscle. The muscle's like, okay. Because the muscle will totally give it up. It's easy. Um, so then it feeds muscle tissue. So then, okay, now we've got to drive the kids to school. We've got to go to work. got to do stuff. Now I'm at work. I'm in my meeting. I'm chewing my pen. Like, oh, okay, whatever. And I'm, I'm taking notes. I'm typing. And now all my cells are in my fingers. And they're working really hard. But they're so hungry. I'm like, what is hungry? Do you feed them? We're so hungry. And you're like, okay, I'm going to give them a salad. Iceberg lettuce that has freaking nothing in it. Eight calories and no nutrition whatsoever. It's terrible, right? They're like, I'm gonna have salad, I mean healthy. And your cells are like, Are you kidding me? Like, we're gonna starve to death in here, and she doesn't even care. You're you're kidding me. Okay, well, I mean, we'll split up these little carrot shreds and then and then we'll get some more muscle. So yeah, grab some muscle, grab some muscle from the from the upper arms or something, and, and we'll eat that for now. We'll, we'll ration it out, you know. And so then you're like, okay, well. Gotta go take the kids' soccer practice. I gotta go to the grocery store. I gotta make dinner. By this time, your cells are like dragging, like through the desert. Like, no, I can't continue. I can't do it. And they're all shriveling and sad, and they're probably dehydrated. So now they're getting all squishy looking. Like, instead of happy circles, they're like scalloped edges, right? Because they're squishy. Because they're dehydrated. Because you didn't drink all your water the way you're supposed to. So now they're thirsty, and they're starving. And your fat cells are like, no. And then you know what happens? You finally eat. And you probably eat a little too much because you haven't eaten all day, right? And then you eat dinner. And they're like, oh, thank God. Oh, this is wonderful. So they're running over there to get their food. And then the fat cells come. And they're like, nope. We need all of this. Because she's not going to feed us. We're going to store it. You guys can wait in line. We're going to talk to this food first. We're taking it all. So your fat cells come. And they get bigger and they get fatter. And they get bigger and fatter and bigger and fatter. Because they're trying to save your life. They're thinking they're doing a great job. They're like, you know, a little lifeguard. So then, then they go back to your fat and they sit there in all the places where you don't want it, like, you know, and, and everything, right? So you're like, what is this doing here? And you're all mad about it. But they're helping you. So now your cells are really starving because you're going to push play. You're going to work out. You're going to go to freaking Zumba class. You're going to do turbo fire. You're going to do something real crazy, fan and AP90X. And you're about to ask them for a thousand calories. And they're like, from what? Where does she think we're going to get this? All we have to do work with is bone. You know, we've been eating muscle all day. I'm tired of that. That's not giving it up. Let's, let's eat some, let's eat some bone. All right. There goes bone density. Osteoporosis, right? So it's feeding off your body to fuel your body. But what happens is your muscle gets less, your fat gets more. And then, as your body composition changes, you burn less calories. And you keep screwing yourself over and over and over. Because a pound of muscle burns six times the amount of a pound of fat does. So now you now you can look at a person and, you know, skinny fat, right? They, they look like an average thing, an average weight and height. But their, their body fat percentage is so high because they've been under eating. 
And this will, and then as you start to eat a little too much, you eat too much at some point, all of it right to fat every time, fat, fat, fat. And then you're freaking out. How come your seven day crash diets don't work? And it's because your body is going insane inside. It's running back and forth. And it's like, why won't she just give us some nutrients? And so I also want to talk a little bit about nutrient density. Actually, let me check the timing on this thing. Before I, 25 minutes? Yeah, I can talk about this. Okay. Um, a little bit about nutrient density. What's really important is that when you're eating your calories, that they have nutrients in them. So let's say, for instance, you have two these two meals. Let's say you have um, a beer and a piece of pizza. Okay. And I don't actually know how much calories would be in that, but we're going to pretend that it's a thousand. That seems like a reasonable thing. Um, and then you have a thousand calories over here of fruits, vegetables, nuts, eggs, meats, etc. Obviously, a much bigger pile here, but that's not the point. So in your pizza and your beer, your beer is completely empty calories, right? No nutrients of any kind. It's nothing good in your alcohol. And your pizza has like a little bit of vitamin A, a little bit of vitamin C, maybe from the tomatoes and uh, there might be some, a little bit of protein in there from the cheese. Maybe you have meat on there, a little bit of protein. So that's, that's cool. There's some carbs in the crust. Okay, fine. So maybe you got like 2% of your daily intake of a couple of vitamins and maybe 10% of a couple other things from your piece of pizza and your beer. So we have 1,000 calories. And then over here, you have 1,000 calories. And this 1,000 calories has, you know, 100% of your vitamin A, 100% of your vitamin C, um, you got some kale in there, so you've got like all sorts of good things, iron and zinc, and you're doing amazing. You got you maybe got egg whites, protein. You're just doing fantastic, right? What's going to happen is if you're over here on the beer and pizza side, the body doesn't care that you had a thousand calories at that point. What it cares about is okay, but we need more vitamin A. So if the only food she's going to give us is pizza and beer, and we know that we have ten percent of vitamin A, we need nine more pieces of pizza and your body will drive you to eat more and eat more and eat more and eat more and then over here where it's all healthy and stuff it's like oh okay we're good yeah no i think we're good i think we covered a lot of things you know i think the only thing that we're missing right now is a little more protein and um i think we need like maybe a little a little iron so i'm gonna i'm gonna crave i'm gonna crave some meat i might crave some red meat i think uh yeah i think that's what we're i think let's let's ask her for some of that Hug off and stuff. Get her to eat some red meat. And you'll have a weird craving for like steak all of a sudden. You're like, I don't even like steak. That's weird, right? Like you might, that could happen to you. And that's because you got everything else and your body's just like, well, what could we get iron from? What could we get more protein from? And it'll ask you for that. But it'll only ask you until it's all set. So you can actually fill your body with more nutrients in less calories really, really well if you're eating healthy versus having incessant cravings and always feeling hungry from eating poor food that has no nutrients in it. And that's why things like kale, like kale is extremely nutrient dense. Um, Shakeology is the most nutrient dense thing that I've ever been able to find that doesn't have any chemicals in it because it has 70 ingredients in 140 calories. So as you can imagine, it's got protein, carbs, antioxidants, superfoods, etc., but only 140 calories, nutrient dense. I hope you're seeing here what I mean by dense. Like, there's a small amount of calories, a lot of nutrients that are in it. So when you are eating your calories, you want to make sure that that's something that you're taking into consideration as well. They're not just empty calories that aren't going to fuel your body. Because those little cells are trying really hard to do everything that you're asking. Especially for those of you who are very athletic or you're working out a lot. I mean, every time you push your body, you actually tear your muscle fibers and they grow back together. Tear, grow, tear, and grow. Constantly. You're lifting weights doing uh, a lot of jumping, maybe you're push-ups, whatever you're doing, that's what gets you stronger. But if you don't give it anything to actually make those muscle fibers grow back together, give it the energy to do that, it can't. How's it going to repair your body if it can't even, it doesn't even have enough energy to get you through the day, but you're asking it to not only do that, but also repair the damage you're doing, because it is essentially damage, right? Um, muscle fibers are meant to tear and grow, it's okay, it is meant to be stronger, but it is essentially like damage you're asking your body to repair and you're asking it to repair it with nothing. So it's really important that you're being careful about how much you're putting in your body and what you're putting in your body. 
So I will take you right into our challenge for this week. And that is going to be small eat often, I believe. Open it in a different screen because I thought I was going to be a genius. Okay. So remember, the week's rules are cumulative. So no obvious junk rule sticks. Still can't have any junk food. No chips, no ice cream, no soda, et cetera, et cetera. That doesn't ever go away. That'll be part of the challenge for all eight weeks. Um, now, the focus, of course, also stays. So water. We're going to keep drinking our water. But we're going to add two. We're going to add a new challenge and add a new focus. So the challenge this week is to eat small and eat often. And I apologize for not making contact. I'm actually just reading this to you. Eat four to six small meals a day. And don't eat anything except for lean meats. Um, or lean protein, if, if you're a vegetarian, so lean proteins, uh, about three hours before you go to sleep. That is something that I will get, if you guys want to know more about the way that protein, fats, and sugar break down differently in your body, I can probably find you some research on that. Um, but for now, if you can just trust me, that would rock, because we don't have another 20 minutes for me to ramble. Um, follow, okay, following these rules will keep, keep your blood sugar levels more static, and your energy will stay consistent. Try to keep each snack or meal balanced. Keep about a, um, oh, you know what? We went 50, 30, 20, didn't we? Um, I believe that I gave you ratios. You know what? Let me look it up. I don't want to confuse you because if I, there's too many of you. If I confuse you, it'll be like complete chaos. So give me a second real quickly. I will look. I definitely give you some specific ratios for a reason, and I will cover them right now. I just want to make sure that I don't tell you wrong thing. Okay, no, it's correct. I have it correct. Okay. So, um, so your goal is to keep a 40% protein, 40% carbohydrate, 20% fat scale in mind. Um, if you are very lean already and you're working on your last few pounds, you would want to change that to 50% uh, protein and 30% carbohydrates. But, um, if you're not quite there yet, then you will leave it as we've said it. Um, you don't need to worry too much about it right now, but I will explain why it's done that way. Just realize that you need a bit from each macronutrient group, which is what those are called. Eat based on what you'll be doing for the next few hours. This one's really important. If you're working out, you're going to want to eat a little bit more, and maybe that's when you have the carbs. If you're sitting at your desk, maybe a little bit less, and that's when you have the protein. If you're going to be sedentary, um, uh, if you are sedentary all the time during the day, then you would want to have your carbs in the morning. Just front load with those. Um, now, the three hours before rule, three hours before bed rule is important, especially for fats and carbohydrates. By allowing time for all the carbs you eat get it, to get into your bloodstream, your body will sleep in fat burning mode rather than calorie storing, storing mode. This is important because undigested carbs in your stomach at night are stored as adipose tissue aka fat. So they break down differently and it is important. Now the don't eat before bed rule is a load of crap uh, and it's a myth and if you google is that a myth they'll hundreds of people will tell you that yes that's a load of crap you can absolutely eat before bed. You probably should be to sustain proper blood sugar levels and not hurt your insulin in your body but what they should be saying is don't eat carbs and fat before bed. Eat protein before bed. It is not unusual in, when I was working um, diligently on my original you know, weight loss, for me to have um, a chicken breast at 9.30 at night. I still occasionally do it, but I, I work really weird hours now. So 9.30 at night is actually not that late for me to be eating, so I'm going to be up way later. Um, that is three hours before bed for me, so it's actually fine. Um, but it's common that I would uh, maybe a handful of lower fat nuts or, um, yeah, like a chicken breast, something like that. Because that gives your body enough to make it through the night and not store, but to burn. So you can eat before bed. It is just about what you eat before bed. And when when rules are created for the mass public, it's just easier to tell people not to eat before bed. Because then it's like, well, what's a protein? And I don't know. And I have to look this up. And it's just easier for people to say don't eat before bed. But it's actually not that good for your body. Okay. We, and the focus this week, this one actually should be fun for a lot of you is carbs are not the enemy. So actually carbs are the worst thing in the world and they're so necessary. What we confuse is 
processed crap. When we say, oh, I'm not eating carbs. We should really just say, I'm not eating bread and other crap that I should be putting in my body, right? Because you are eating carbs. There's carbs in fruit, carbs in vegetables. There's even carbs in some things that are, that are mostly protein. There's carbs in so many things. So um, carbs are not the enemy. Your body needs them, just like it needs proteins and fats. The trick is to choose the right carbs. As a, si as a society, we eat too much refined sugar. Uh, complex carbs like whole grain rice, sweet potatoes, and legumes, uh, beans, and things like that, those are legumes, are outstanding foods. Even fruits, which have simple carbohydrates wrapped in fiber, are very good for you and hard to overconsume. And that's why I tell you not to look at the sugar on your life fitness style if you're eating fruit. Just don't worry about it. Um, while you don't want to eat a diet based on nothing but carbs, uh, because that would even that you would have too many spikes in your blood sugar spike, drop, spike, drop, it would not be pretty. Um, you get really moody. Um, making the right carb choices will maximize your body's potential. Try to avoid white rice and all flours. Read labels and try to avoid ones that use the word enriched because that means those products have been stripped of their natural nutrients, over-processed, and then fortified with a few random nutrients. So a lot of cereals say that, a lot of bread say that. You don't want anything to do with any of that stuff. So um, you can stick to things like wild rice and brown rice and quinoa and awesome vegetables and green beans and all the other kind of legumes that can provide you these carbs, fruits, vegetables, absolutely. What you don't want to be anywhere near is going to be anything that's processed. So we don't want to be eating bread. We don't want to be eating crackers. Anything that says enriched, if it, I mean, if it has flour in it, there's, if it has flour in it, it's like pretty much not good for you. There's, there's no way that's good for you. Um, there are a lot of breads that are honestly whole grain breads not enriched there's no flour in them if you find them most of the time you do need to keep them in the refrigerator or the freezer um pretty common there are a lot of things that can that are made out of other stuff almond meal things like that so these products do exist if you are losing your mind right now about not being able to eat bread so um that's pretty much it for this week so we're just going to focus on no junk eating small and eating often and then remember the challenges are as much, or excuse me, the focuses are as much water as possible. And then shifting to good carbs. That's something that you want to be focused on, shifting to good carbs. Now, some people are asking about my fitness pal ratios. So I'm hoping this makes a little bit more sense now what we're going for. It's the balance that we need. Make sure that in each meal you're getting a little carbs, a little protein, a little fat. So that your body's properly fueled and all the cells that need to do all the little things are all getting what they need at that moment. Um, now, fat is actually really good for you. And I, I think it might be next week, but I'm going to tell you. Anyway. Fat is actually really good for you. It's a nice, sustainable fuel. And that keeps a nice, steady energy. This is n unlike um, carbs, which spike and drop, spike and drop, spike and drop. And um, protein's like a little bit smaller. Um, but fat is really really slow burning so you can stay full of something like an egg tomato avocado breakfast really easily because you've got the fat from the egg and the fat from the avocado and the protein from the egg and then you've got carbs from your tomatoes and it's really nice because it'll take you through a good couple of hours without feeling deprived without feeling hungry and when you do feel hungry it won't feel so sudden the way that it can when it comes off of like eating like something like a donut for breakfast it'll feel like hungry like oh my god because it's such a drop and you can get a headache and get moody and not feel well and I'd be like, I'm so hungry but if you fuel your body with the right things it don't you actually don't have that reaction um because the blood sugar um it's like oh it's just a little bit less a little bit less a little bit less very slow very nice um so i think that's all i have for you now i do want to tell you what the prize is because there's a prize this week because it's second week so i put it somewhere i think i put it over here yeah that's over there I have three computer monitors, so I do that a lot. Anyway, so here's the prize this week. So I'm like always I'm gonna post the the seven day schedule, what we're gonna do each day. That's I have it. This that'll be posted when the video is posted, so you'll be able to see that right now. And as always, roll call, 6 40 in the morning, Pacific time every every day. Educational post relevant to what we just talked about on the video every night. That's the same. Um, I might jump in there and chat with you during the day over a few things. Um, if you've got questions, whatever. Um, and then 
So since we already know what they're going to be, Tuesday is going to be tracking Tuesday always. You always track on Tuesday. And that is very purposeful because if the roll call is tracking on Tuesday for Monday's log, I have a lot better chance of you coming back from a weekend and actually doing well that week versus being like, oh, crap, she wants to know Thursday. Now you've had four days to completely screw off. So it's purposeful and it will always be on Tuesday. Um, I might add some more, but there will at least be Tuesday. So the two things that you're going to be basing the contest off of this week are person who has the best tracking on for, for their Monday tracking posted on Tuesday. And that is by best, I mean the closest without going under on their calories and closest in the ratios and has the best share on Sunday. And you'll see what we're doing on Sunday. So I'm going to look for a combination of best tracking. So I'll probably look through and grab like the top five people. And then I'm going to, out of those five people, I'm going to look for who shared the coolest thing on Sunday. And then that'll be the winner. And what the prize is, oh, I didn't bring it up here. Oh, dang. Well, it's really cool. Um, it is the first cookbook that I ever got when I first started learning to cook and eating healthy. And it's Hungry Girl um, 200 Under 200. And I have 300 Under 300 as well. Amazing. Um, and they are 200 recipes under 200 calories. And they're breakfast, snacks, lunch, and dinner. And she does the most amazing stuff. She And she, she does a lot of stuff for individuals, which I don't know about you guys, but it was hard for me as just a single person back then. Like, I'm, I'm not going to cook a gourmet meal and spend all this money. Like I need to know how to make a breakfast in two minutes flat for one person. And that's the kind of stuff that she does. So like egg mugs were one of the first things that I found of hers were like, you take a mug, you spray, uh, you like put uh, cooking oil on it, or um, you can spray it with nonstick stuff if you want. I mean, you don't have to, I don't, I think nonstick's got a lot of like plastic chemicals in it. So I wouldn't, but uh, it helps clean the cup and you put egg whites in there. And like sausage crumbles and maybe some like vegan cheese or some regular like light cheese or whatever. And you just put it in the microwave and you cook it and you stir it up and you have scrambled eggs. Like less than a minute. Just like that. That kind of stuff. So her cookbook's really awesome. And you will get a copy of that. That's going to be the prize this week is that, is that cookbook. If you happen to already have the 200 under 200, 200, 200 cookbook, I will get you the 300 under 300 instead. So... I'm really excited for this week. I think you guys are doing amazing. I'm super proud of you that so many of you guys have made it this far and you're really making the difference. I know that the excitement can start to die down a little bit. And what I'm hoping is that you guys are going to stay tight knit enough that that's not going to happen. I mean, you guys are having partners in week two. It, I mean, it should be really awesome. You guys have got, you now understand how to put a photo in an album. You know how to do your fitness pal link. Like you're starting to get it. Things make sense. It's not stressful. It's starting to be enjoyable. You're getting a lot of good education and you're learning and you're learning about yourself and you're making friends. So it should be a really good week if you stay engaged and really enjoy it. So I hope that you guys are having the time of your life and I'm very excited to see what you do with week two. And with that said, I guess that's all I got for you. All right. Keep up the awesome work. Super proud of you. I will see you on Facebook as always.